All right, um, I'm gonna have to make a uh, a KiCad footprint for this uh, for this Nixie tube, and I need to figure out how big these pins are. Uh, Thirty-five and a half. Thirty-six and a half. Thirty-five. Uh, 35, 35, oh, 37 and a half. Hmm. All right, that one's kind of fat. Five and a half. Most of these are pretty thin. Hmm, I wonder what that one fat one was. 37. 37 and a half. Let me see. This guy's just got some solder on him. Now he's just, he's just kind of chibi. Okay, so I think I'll use that one as my 37 and a half. Okay, let me write that down. Uh, 0.375, oops, 0, 0.375 inches diameter. All right. And then the uh, pinout is described on the data sheet, so it has a mechanical drawing for all the pin locations and the pin out and stuff. So that will come in handy. <clears throat> so yeah, I think I'm ready to go. Um, so I was looking at laying this out and I need to figure out how far apart these can be and still look good because I have a lot of wires and it's high voltage, so you kind of have to have some spacing. And uh, let me kind of look at this. That's a nice spacing. Point 0.7. Point 0.7 apart. Don't want them too close. Yeah, okay. So 0.7 tube to tube. All right, so I can do that. Now, uh, when you're designing circuits and you're just creating a PC board, a lot of times you're not very worried because you're used to having a 3.3 volt system or a five volt system maybe even up to 24 volts, but that's, that's really, really low voltage and you don't really have to worry about much, but this is going to be upwards of 200 volts uh, running, running around this thing. And so I want to make sure that all of my traces can stand a 200 volt um, system. So if you have a, a, a trace and you have another trace, well, there's two things you can worry about. You can worry about the uh, width of the trace. That's kind of the, the current carrying capability of it. And then the, then the gap between the traces, the spacing between the traces. So um, in a lot of my layouts, um, I don't try to have super thin thing, even though you can do six mils and things like that. Most of the time I shoot it at uh, 10 or 12 uh, thousandths of an inch. So I probably still will adhere to either a 10 or a 12 thousandth of an inch. Now, there are calculators online. You can go find um, distances between traces and figure out what that, what that needs to be. So we'll have to, go, we'll have to go find that out before we can lay this out. All right, uh, here is a chart. There are some calculators online as, as well, but I like this chart. So you can see here, 
if you're only worried about zero to 15 volts, then um, you can have very, very, you know, two mils, two thousandths of an inch spacing between things and everything's okay. So it says bare board and assembly. We're going to go for bare board. And the bare board has B1, 2, 3, 4. So B1 is internal, B2 is external, external connections with permanent solder mask. So we're in a B4 situation where we're going to have traces and they will have a, a solder mask, which will help in um, reducing the humidity and the, and the gap and stuff like that. So it adds some insulation between things. So we will be B4 column. So 170 to 250 says here 0.4 millimeters or 16 thousandths of an inch. So I think that's what I want to shoot for. 16 thousandths of an inch even gets me up to 300 volts. So that's perfect. So my guideline is going to be uh, 16 thousandths of an inch. We'll go with that. All right. So we have KiCad here. We're going to go into footprint editor and uh, I have an MSI um, library I've already I've already laid out the uh, locations of all of the all of the parts and their pinouts but I haven't put in the uh, hole size yet so let's figure that out um, guess I should have done that before I did all of these, but uh, let's see here. Hole diameter 0 0.03. Yeah, so we better make that 0 0.038. And um, keep the outside. Yep, yeah, I think that'll be all right. So I guess I just have to go through all of these. I don't know how to do bulk edits, which like Eagle used to have, but... Uh, I don't think this one has it. I don't think I can do like a bulk, a bulk properties. Let's see here, bulk properties. Yeah, so I don't think you can do a bulk properties. Create from selection, swap, yeah. Maybe there's a clever way to do it. If somebody knows how to do that, let me know. I'll just have to go through here one by one and should have done it before I did anything else. But then I could have just plunked them down the right size. Lesson learned. Um, yeah, I wonder if I should. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay, uh, so I have all the holes the right size, so we will do a save here. Now we can close this. I can open up my work in progress. So this is um, me just trying out things, kind of seeing what is the spacing between parts I have and currently. So, like, so we measured having spacing of 0.7 inches to be nice. Let's measure this one. Um, so these are about 0.72 inches apart. That's ah, pretty close. That's pretty close. Um, so you see um, the uh, clearance. So if you go 
up here, we'll do pre edit predefined. Here we go, net classes, constraints. Yeah, so I have it here in net classes. So net classes, I have default, and then I have the power. So for power traces, I have it at 32 mils, and at default, I have it at 12 mils. But then here's a clearance table, so it's going to be 16 um, thousandths of an inch for clearance. So when you come here, you can see there's this little yellow line around these pads, and that is the 16 mil clearance from here to here. So you can see from this that there is no way to take a trace between the holes, okay? And these guys up here, you also, you could get a trace between the holes, but it would be very, very thin. So we're going to have to lay this out so that we don't have any uh, traces going between pads. And that's what I've done here. So these are the two Nixie tubes. These are their anode uh, resistors. This is the uh, BCD to Nixie driver, the two chips. And then this is a... Uh, I squared C to eight data line um, chip. And uh, we have a couple over here we still need to do. Um, let's see here. These need to come off. Oh, on both sides. Oh, I see. Yeah, I needed to move things around to make to make room for things. So what we're gonna do, oops, I'm gonna need to move this guy over. And uh, yeah, you can see him there. I'm gonna need to just bring some lines up. So we're gonna go here to uh, our first signal here. We're gonna bring him up. And another one here needs to go up. All right. Okay, well, that looks pretty good. Everything is looking good. We need to do the same thing over on this side. We need to make some room in here. And, uh oh. Okay, there we go. And now I need to drop in some lines. All right, so everything is hooked up here, other than the I squared C lines coming out. So the other thing that you might be inclined to do, and I did that first here, and I'll show that to you as I said, oh, I'll just do a ground pour. Um, and so I have this nice ground pour, and the ground pour is going to adhere to the 16 mil spacing and stuff too, but I don't think it's so smart to do a ground pour and just give it more chances to arc over to something. I think that's probably just not good practice. Um, so think I can at least do this. We could bring it up at least to here. And uh, pour that. So now, now we just have the ground plane underneath the digital circuitry. We still have a, some high voltage things coming here, but Maybe it's still best to route the ground separately. I need to think about that, but I think I like the idea of keeping keeping no grounds around this area where all that high voltage stuff is going on. Best just not to give it anything to uh, to be able to jump to. You can go either way. You could say, oh, the ground's going to be safer. Uh, I don't know.
So the uh, schematic is sort of looking like this now. Oops. Uh, where's the schematic thing here? Zoom to fit, zoom. We can just zoom in on this. There we go. So we have uh, these Nixies. I had to create those symbols as well. We have the two driver chips, and then we have the uh, I squared C chip over here. So the I squared C chip has uh, address lines and then the clock and data. And then a weird reset line. I don't know why the reset line is there, but yeah, I try to figure out what I want to do with that in the system. I'll probably pull it out and bring it to a pad in case I want to use it 